Oké, okay, uh, Chantal, uh, thank you for uh, taking the time for, uh, for our talk, for You're our welcome. conversation. Um, my first question to you. Uh, was there a particular moment in your life where you decided you wanted to become a photographer? Yes, there was. Yeah. And it, it's quite a long time ago. I think it must have been like at least 20 years ago. I think I was 15 or 16 years old. And um, I did a first course in the darkroom, like uh, black and white photography. Mm -hmm. And I was developing my own uh, films and I was uh, printing my first image and then I was like totally blown away okay. uh, by seeing that first image coming up in a developer and I was like, wow, this is magic. Um, then I knew I wanted to be a photographer, I wanted to do something with photography. Okay. And during my high school, um, I uh, did an um, exam in art art uh, and art history mm -hmm. and uh, my um, art teacher he played a very important role um, uh, I think in my career as a, as a, as a photographer mm -hmm. because he introduced me to a lot of art uh, in his classes uh, especially his art history classes and he took us to a lot of museums yeah, in Amsterdam but also Paris and he would talk a lot about uh, especially paintings and I think, um, I still think also in composition of paintings when I'm making my pictures, I still have this, all the, 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 the paintings that I, um, that I learn looking at, I have it still in mind when I'm okay. photographing myself. Yeah. And uh, from that moment on, I knew that I wanted to do photography. And when I was very young, I um, was always very interested in, um, in um, inequality. Um, I was, um, it was very important for me that um, everybody would have the same uh, chances in life. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that exactly came from, but I just it was a feeling from inside. Mm -hmm. So I was very interested in also um, uh, Africa, and um, and uh, I thought it was my, my dream when I was 16 years old was to go to the Hague, the Photo Academy in the Hague, mm -hmm. study photography, and then travel the world and document the things that were not going well, like, like being a photojournalist. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was my dream. Yes. But my dream changed after high school. I was in an exchange program, and um, I was very lucky uh, to be able to um, go and live for three months in Kenya with a Kenyan family, together with seven other youngsters from the, the province where I'm from, from Limburg. And uh, after those three months, the Kenyan um, counterparts w were also coming to Holland and lived with our families at that time, because we were 18 years old at that time. Um, and while we were in Kenya, um, we had to do voluntary work, and I was introduced to a refugee camp. And when I was working with refugees, I was like, wow. Um, I think this is what I want to do in my life. I don't want to uh, take pictures from the refugees, but I actually want to interact more with them and trying to uh, do something for them. So then that changed my whole idea of going to the uh, photo academy in, in uh, Den Haag. Mm -hmm. And I went to study social work instead um, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Nijmegen. Okay. And um, so before I became a photographer, eventually, I worked as a refugee counselor for, for like 10, 12, 10 to 12 years in Holland. Yes, yes, yes. But photography has always been part of my life. Okay. During this during this work, I was still keeping photography as a very serious hobby. Um, I think, like somewhere, like halfway my my social work career, I went to Apeldoorn, the photo fox school, yeah. and I studied there for one year. And it was pre digital time, mm -hmm. and but it was too technical for me. Oh, so yeah. after one year, I was like, oh no, this is not what I had in mind. I yeah. didn't want to know all the chemical processes, and it was really um, very. Um, I wanted to be more um, working with art and images, and mm -hmm. and I didn't find that in the in the photo fox yeah. school. Um, so when I lost my job in, uh, at, ref uh, uh, at my refugee work, mm -hmm. um, my former boss asked me, Chantal, what, what are you going to do if you cannot um, uh, work for us anymore, if, you know, if we don't have any money to pay you anymore? And then it was very easy to pick up photography again. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and a so natural thing to do, actually. Very natural, yeah. because I was also able to... Um, um, uh, use my experience that I learned. I learned so much and I, I 
um, from uh, interacting with refugees, um, uh, it was time to combine those two passions in life. Yeah. And so I decided to go and, and study in, uh, in Amsterdam. I went to the Photo Academy mm -hmm. uh, because at that time that was the only part-time education uh, that was possible to do it in three years. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to go to Den Haag, but it was, I think, like eight years because you do, you know, it's four years and then they just double the time, which was for me at that time not possible because mm -hmm. we already bought a house in Holland and, you know, it would have been, I needed to make some money and I couldn't, you know, and, I, and eight years was too long for me. Yeah. So it was very easy to decide to go for the photo academy. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I went there in 2005 and I finished in 2008 mm -hmm. with a project about um, New York. Uh -huh. It's called Bronx Sites. Uh -huh. And um, during my um, exchange program to Kenya, I met my husband that I'm uh, still together with right now. Okay. And um, Bart and I, we both had a um, very close friend in Kenya. And he, um, I keep the show store, but he ended up in New York and he invited us to come and celebrate the millennium with him in 1999 and he was staying in the Bronx at that time. Mm -hmm. So that was my introduction with Bronx. So we, we came here in 1999 to celebrate the millennium and then we became friends with the person he was renting a room from. Mm -hmm. And from that time on, um, uh, we, had the, we were in the very lucky position to be able to always to to be in New York because we had a space you know a place where we could stay mm -hmm. and um, we fell in love with the city mm -hmm. and um, I uh, did my graduation project about a uh, girl the person that we still share the apartment with now mm -hmm. in, in 2013 mm -hmm. um, and uh, I graduated with this project um, from the photo academy in 2008 okay. <laughs> so, uh, love initially uh, brought you to New York, mm -hmm. uh, but you also fell for New York, the city itself. Yes. Right. Um, so you you have uh, your work. You work here now as a uh, photographer. Yes. Right. Uh, can you name some of your clients? Yes. Um, I started working in 2008 for mainly the NRC Handelsblad. Mm -hmm. That's a Dutch uh, newspaper. daily newspaper. Yes. Um, I did assignments for Vrij Nederland. That's a, a weekly uh, magazine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I photograph for Holland's Deep. Uh, that's a glossy magazine in Holland that yeah. unfortunately isn't there anymore right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Um, I started working for Stern magazine, that's a German uh, weekly magazine. Yes. Um, I worked for the Standard, that's a, a Belgian yeah. newspaper. Mm -hmm. I started working for the Dutch consulate um, in New York, so I was doing assignments for them. And they were all related to Europe because I was here on a photojournalist uh, visa, mm -hmm. which only allowed me to work for European media oh, to cover see, news. I and I could only work for a uh, European, uh, uh, um, how do you call that? Clients? Clients. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And since, maybe I should already say, since two um, months ago, mm -hmm. um, and my husband and I were able to get a green card, mm -hmm. and that makes it different uh, because now I can also work for um, American um, companies and clients uh, so I recently got my first uh, story published in the New York Times mm -hmm. and uh, I started now also working as a as a teacher at the International Center of Photography yeah. okay. so okay. yes that's a wonderful combination uh, you know, these client commissioners, which you mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, okay, New York Times, but also the Dutch and uh, German and Belgian magazines and newspapers, uh, how did you get in? Did you call them? Did, was it a matter of cold calling or did they approach you? How did it go? Well, I, um, I graduated in 2008 in May. Mm -hmm. And uh, I um, graduated with a beautiful portfolio book. And with that portfolio book, with images from my Bronx Science project, I tried to, um, I just called to people in Holland, uh, to uh, photo editors, and I emailed them. First I emailed them, I guess, and I don't, I don't call them right away. I, oh. I, I introduced myself via the email. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if I was lucky, they would, you know, invite me. And I think, 
Uh, I won some awards with the Photo Academy Award, mm -hmm. which gave me already also some introductions with photo editors. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was easier for me to get in. So that was, uh, I think, the, the most important thing that you have some kind of special entrance to get into a photo editor. Yeah. And once I uh, I went there, I introduced myself, I showed my work, and I um, and we had a conversation. And that's actually how it how it happened. That's how it went. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Very yes. good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, your, your client commissioners, they might have certain expectations on how the final photos should look like. Mm -hmm. uh, they brief you about the desired results. Yes. Uh, has the briefing ever been a source of conflict? Sure, that, yeah. does some, that, that, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Especially because um, as a photographer based in New York working for European clients, uh, for um, editors in Holland, it's very important that you can see that things are shot in New York. So what I hear a lot if, if, if I get an assignment is that make sure that you see either a yellow cap or something very uh, um, uh, specific, you know, that when people look at the image that they see it's New York right away. Yeah. Well, as a photographer, that's not really exciting always, you know, because if you have to do like the first time, it's fine. But then after like assignment number, I don't know, 25, you know, you're like, oh no, the yellow yeah. cap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's sometimes you just want to be free and uh, take, a, uh, you know, take a picture from just the person what you think might be the best, you know, uh, photograph, but then maybe that doesn't have the typical New York background and that is kind of limiting. But as a photographer, I learned that you should always try to take both images, mm -hmm. send them both, and sometimes you can convince the photo editor that they do want to go with the other image. So, you know, it's just a matter of um, um, trying to be open, um, of course, they you get an assignment, so you do what they what their expectations are, and you can always do a little bit extra, which is really my my opinion. They really appreciate it if you try yeah. something new, and yeah. well, sometimes you are lucky, and they they cho they choose the one that you are also okay. uh, happy okay. with. Fantastic. Um, uh, every freelancer is on his own when it comes to running their business, uh, finding clients, maintaining contacts, networking. Uh, what do you consider the most difficult in that sense? Trying to get connections, yeah. trying to, um, uh, trying, having an, um, um, trying to get that first appointment, that's very important. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned that it's very important that uh, it really helps if you can get an introduction so that somebody who knows that editor already is able to introduce you because then the editor Probably if they know the other person, they will take it more seriously because I learned that editors get like a million Im uh, emails a day, like mm -hmm. at least a thousand or a hundred emails. So it's very hard to like stand out from an email that somebody is like, oh my God, you know, we really need to talk to them. Yeah. Um, so that is, that is difficult and you need to learn, you know, a way to, um, um, to, to, get an, to get an introduction. And I think your peers are very important. Oh, yeah? Yes, because um, at least in America, I, I know that sometimes in Holland, maybe the, it feels a little bit different, but I have a feeling that in America, people are very open to share. Um, uh, if you really um, think that somebody is really, um, that somebody really make, would make a good fit for some kind of magazine, I think because there are so many photographers in New York that one, uh, more or one less that you know gets introduced to the to the editor it doesn't really uh, make a difference because made the best win I think yeah. so um, I do believe that um, that I learn a lot from my peers you know uh, who who I should um, um, uh, who I you know that I even didn't think of somebody that I, that would be interesting for me so we we share a lot of information okay yes. Okay. And um, you mentioned something else. You said uh, contacts, and then the no. oh, and following up. That's also oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's difficult too because you know um, how many times should you follow up? Um, what do you want to? Um, 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 you don't know. Uh, sometimes 
if you have a good reason you know enough to follow up yeah. and you have to learn also to see you know what feels right and what doesn't feel right yeah. and I think once you establish a really good contact I think for me it's very important to really build a good relationship with an editor and then that comes naturally in the beginning it doesn't feel that naturally if you don't know the person but oh, yeah. you got to make sure that you like really connect with somebody well yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you will notice, sometimes you have a very good connection and sometimes you don't. And then, you know, you, sh you should ask yourself, is it worth going into that road? Because I do think that it is important that there is a connection with somebody. Mm. Yeah. On the, on the human level. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Apart from great quality photos, it's the, it's the click. Yes, huh? it's yeah. very important. Yeah. 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 And that, that you're nice to work with. And yeah. that you, uh, you know, and that people know that if you get an assignment, that you always deliver on time, and that you, you know, that 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 is that it is right. The most important thing, the difficult thing, is um, uh, um, making fee arrangements. I think that's very important, especially in this time, since there are so many photographers right now. Yeah. Is that we have to make sure that we don't go on the budget. You know, that you. That's also something that you can discuss with your peers. You know, that you're going to make sure that you don't. Um, um, spoil the market yeah, right. uh, because um, for you there are also I mean you can you can give excellent work and you can have a very nice connection and everything can be perfect but if somebody can, does the same for half the money or like um, somebody goes in and says oh no I want to build my portfolio I'll do it for free that's something that's like a disaster for the photography mm -hmm. market mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um, I think it's very good that we know as freelance photographers that we know what we can what we can uh, ask you know yeah. for uh, and and I think like the NVA the um, uh, what is that in English the again for the for journalists yes yeah. I, I called I call them a lot in the beginning to oh, yeah. uh, to talk with them and okay. see what would be a reasonable fee and uh, or if something um, uh, or if there was something special that they wanted to use it on internet or on a book cover or you know something special yeah. then then I would just call them and ask for advice which is really um, I really appreciate and they will not tell you exactly you know this is a, the perfect price but at least you have somebody to talk to right? yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you can make up your mind yeah and uh, so that that's the same for uh, American uh, situation because now the NVA is a Dutch organization, yes. they don't know about the prices in, in, in uh, New York. Right? Yeah, no, well I'm just new in the in American market yeah. so I have a, a new thing to discover also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do think that, um, that there is also an Ameri American um, uh, organization agency that you can get your press card from and, and, yeah. and, you, know, and they can, uh, you can get advice yeah. over there. But for example, like uh, you said, you also work for New York Times now. Uh, do they give? Is it a fixed price? Uh, uh, they well, yeah, you? you you can always negotiate. Oh. I think it's good to negotiate and yeah. see if there is a if there is no, no. You have to check if there is room to negotiate, oh, yeah. and you will find out right away. You know, if you and it really depends on the um, uh, on the newspaper or magazine that you uh, that you work for. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. They all have different budgets. Uh, yes, and well. all have different also ways to work with. Some paper pictures, some paper uh, a, a day rate. Out of you know, it really depends. And then if you if they assign you for something, it might be a different way than if you uh, sell your own project. So it's you know, it's it's good that you talk with people and find out you know what kind of things are usual. You know what 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 is a um, so that you know the situation, that you get knowledge about that. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, right, right, okay. So, well, you already mentioned uh, uh, one or two, um, like that you should be a nice person to work with, but can you uh, give more examples of other qualities that a photographer should possess to become successful, beside uh, photographic skills? Yeah, well, I think you need I think you need so many skills to yeah. be a photographer, yes. And I think I really underestimated that when I started it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, I think so. I didn't realize how, um, how much um, skills you, you need to have to be like, you know, a suc successful photographer. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Um, <laughs> well, taking f you, you pictures need to be excellent first. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's, that's already 
uh, the first step. But then you need to be able to sell yourself, yeah. which is so difficult, you know, because selling for somebody else is easier than selling something for yourself. Yeah. At least that's what I experienced. I could easily sell your photos. I mean, there's no, it's not so much shame or, you know, it's, it's yeah. more free, but if it's, especially if you put a lot of work in it and you have a lot of, uh, you know, care about the project, it's very difficult, you know, to, to really negotiate it. Or if you really, really, really want something so bad, you know, mm -hmm. you, uh, it's, it's, yeah, that's a, that's a, um, so selling it for yourself is, it's, it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. Then, um, um, you got to make sure that you market yourself well, you know, and nowadays with all these social media, you need to not only be um, good in your own website, you know, you need, uh, well, the website is another thing that you need to be able to do. Um, uh, having a perfect website, um, uh, what, uh, how editors like to look at it, or uh, if you work with editors, but if you work for the art world, it's completely different. Um, this ho so how do you present yourself to which market? It's, mm. it's, it's a whole exploration that you need to be aware of. Mm. Um, then you um, uh, need to go on social media, because if you, if you don't show what you're doing, um, uh, uh, you, uh, there are a million photograph other photographers who will show what they're doing, so you, you know people will not see what you're doing. So people yeah. need to be able to see. You should, you know, present yourself. And um, actually, I really like social media. It's, I really oh. learned to love it. And in the beginning, it was a little bit difficult, but now it's a, it's an easy way to um, connect with people too, mm -hmm. you know, and to stay in touch with people and to stay on the radar, which is really which is really a nice way. Um, uh, for yourself the first question you ask you know how do you keep contact well I think that social media like Facebook or Instagram can really help with that or Twitter yeah. um, uh, uh, then you need to be able um, to be you need to be a, a businessman I mean if, if you sell your prints you need to be able to you know what what, what are you going to ask for yeah. and then uh, if you're just starting I mean I, I still have a feeling that I'm just starting mm -hmm. um, you have to print it yourself you have to make sure that everything gets sent you you know so you are you, you also you have the, the small business you know like this office uh, yeah the office kind like of thing your own secretary yes <laughs> Like I published my first book and suddenly you have to make sure that all the things are going to, di to the distribution of those books, yeah. you know, so that's another thing that you need to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, um, licensing, for example, you know, if you get contracts, you need to make sure that you know what, what kind of contracts you're reading and what kind of contracts you, you know, you're signing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then you need to be able, oh yeah, to go to uh, network parties because, you know, you need to present yourself at parties. So that's yeah. a very important thing that you should also be able to do. And then, um, well, so it's so much more than just, um, oh yeah, and the most important thing for me mm -hmm. is that nobody is waiting for you. Everything, if you don't initiate anything, mm -hmm. nobody will come to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, in the end you get assignments, but in the beginning you have to build up everything yourself. Yeah, yeah. And um, what I really think was, was a thing that I didn't realize is that it kind of, it's kind of a lonely job. Mm -hmm. um, I come from my refugee work, social work. You had a big team around you, and now in the morning you get up, and there's nobody you know that you can talk to with your colleagues yeah. Yeah. and that's why I learned that it's so important to connect with peers oh because yeah. peers I don't know I so um, undercharge the importance of oh. having to connect with your peers photographers yeah. and uh, I've been going to uh, some portfolio reviews right now that you um, have to invest in because mm -hmm. it's quite expensive to go to portfolio reviews. You have to pay for it in yes. America? Mm -hmm. Yes, and in Holland too. I think it's it's almost everywhere in the world, but sometimes you can get scholarships. Like in America, I went to two that I got. One, I got a full scholarship, and the other one, I had a, a, a half scholarship. Yeah. Um, and I went to the Eddie Adams workshop that was completely, uh, there was no tuition. Um, but somebody told me um, uh, a very important thing that I will never forget. He said, you know, first I was like, um, so you don't make a lot of money as a photographer, in the beginning at least, you know, because yeah. you have to build up this yeah. whole uh, clients. And then you expect to invest quite a lot of money because a portfolio review costs you easily $1,500, you know, because you need to go there, mm -hmm. you need to pay, which is sometimes like $800. 
uh, but you get like sometimes between 15 and 20 people. So, you know, in the end, it's not that much, but to pay uh, and the hotel costs that you have to do. Yeah. But um, it's so worth it. Uh, if oh, you, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, I would not go on a holiday and I would spend my money to go to a portfolio review okay. because not only do you meet new peers, not only do you meet new professionals, um, you learn a lot about your, you know, about your work and um, suddenly something amazing can happen, like in Perpignan, when yeah. I went to Perpignan to what the... Happened? Uh, I went to the photo, fe photo festival in Perpignan and they also had portfolio reviews. Mm -hmm. I think they were for free, by the way, if I remember well, but it's quite a while. It's been like three or four years ago, so I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. But um, So you had to go there early, I remember, and I was there, um, there were a lot of people in front of me, so I, I, was, I was too late, <laughs> actually. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, all the um, famous kind of, you know, in quotes, editors, or the people, the editors that were more, uh, not famous, but very... Um, Important. Well, that for, for the market. Yeah, you know that everybody the wanted to see. Yes, the they were full, and then uh, there was somebody sitting at the Corpus uh, stand. You know, a table, and um, I vaguely knew what Corpus means, and I thought it was like a stock agency. And I, I don't consider myself as a stock, stock photographer, but I um, um, I decided to go there anyway because I was waiting and the lady was who's sitting behind there she looks very nice and was like let me it's just are you interested in seeing my work and she said yes so I sat down and we talked and she loved my work mm -hmm. and she loved it so much that through her in the end um, I was introduced to one of the photo editors in the New York Times and um, um, I would have never expected that to happen because you know I didn't have any um, I didn't didn't know you know I, I was like oh I don't like that Corpus kind of thing I'm not sure that I'm the right photographer yeah. but then I love it, and that's what I love about photography too it's so unexpected oh, yeah. and as a photographer you also need to be able to um, uh, deal with um, that you have no expectations. And um, I was um, uh, assisting Dana Lixenberg when I just moved here, mm -hmm. and she learned me, you, you always need to believe that something will come up. Even though sometimes you have like three weeks, no assignments, mm -hmm. that could happen, and then just believe that some, something will come up. And that's something that you, not everybody can do that, because mm -hmm. you know, you, the, the bills need to be paid, yeah. and uh, so you need to be able to, to handle that kind of stress, yeah. because you know, it is important that you, you know, maintain yourself. Yeah. And with photography, you never know. Um, you never know. Like this week, I got, um, yesterday I got a phone call for an assignment for tomorrow, and then um, instead of having, I thought I was going to make uh, three new portraits for the NLC Handelsblad. I had a meeting today with the journalist. It's going to be six uh, portraits that I can do. Mm. Um, then, um, you know, you just never know. And that's nice. I mean, I like that because yeah. it's y y not one day is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, as a photographer, uh, you need to be able to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. insecurity, and no, not insecurity, I'm looking for the English word. Um, Onzekerheid. The yeah. uncertainty. Of yes. The, you never know no. if you will no. have work. Yes. 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 Oh yeah, and also why you should uh, talking about a, a, a decent fee is that in the beginning you might be like sometimes I talk to a photographer like oh wow you get like um, that kind of money for a photograph and then um, uh, you have to invest so much more you don't have you are not building up a pension you have to invest in so much in your in your um, in your um, uh, cameras. Um, uh, your insurance, everything, you know, you're paying everything yourself and you forget that sometimes, yeah. you know, because you're just so focused on paying your bills for the month, but uh, if you really want to make sure you got to think also a little bit further ahead, which if you have a steady job that I had for for 12 years in Holland, yeah. it's so easy to, you know, I, ne I, could, I couldn't have realized it how, what a big difference it is working as a freelancer instead of having a, a steady job. There's yeah. so many things that are different. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, I would like to ask uh, a question about these portfolio uh, uh, events. Yes. Uh, how would photographers like to see 
photographers, uh, oh, sorry, how would editors like to see uh, a photographer's portfolio? Um, Digital or depends print? a little bit on, on on which market you're um, uh, promoting yourself. Yeah. Like if you if you see somebody from a newspaper, I think it's very. I see a lot of people p taking an iPad right now or a computer, mm -hmm. uh, especially because they use film more. You know, like little small movies or like little films, and it's easy to do that. Um, although every time I never I always take prints because and I get always compliments when people see my book okay. that they really appreciate it seeing real prints even though it's a it's a press agency but I must say that times are changing and I with press agencies I'm not really sure if you really need prints but I do notice that especially the the older generation they can still appreciate the print print images if you present yourself as a fine art photographer you really need prints because mm -hmm. you need to show your quality of work. Yeah. So, and then um, it's important that you have the best quality print available that you would hang on the exhibition wall yeah. Yeah. and that you make sure that you know how you would like to present it. And um, um, so that's very important to invest in that as well. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an investment having promos ready that you always can give out a promo so that people can remember you know who you were because they are going to see like hundreds of uh, photographers. So you want to make sure that you give them something. It can either be a postcard or a business card, but if you want to do something special, you could like make small, I made this small booklet and I have these um, nine little prints in it with my oh, business card nice. so this is a way you know that you that they that they've seen these images when yeah. i show them my book and they have something to remind them and hopefully they will hang it in their office yeah. so they can uh, remember you know yeah. the kind of photographer that i am yeah. and at least they can see that you pay serious attention to presenting that's yourself. that's that's I think the most important thing yeah. that you take uh, your job as serious yeah. as possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, and I think that that you will that will translate. You know that uh, you will communicate that to people when yeah. you when you talk to them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you have a final tip or tips for photographers who are interested in pursuing a career in photography? Yes. Oh, let me think. That's a, I think that's a very very difficult question because it's so personal. Mm -hmm. There's not one photographer I think that you can compare with the other photographer. Everybody has a special road that they're taking. Mm -hmm. And I do think that we can learn from each other. And I think it's very good that people um, who consider a career in photography, that they um, 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 are very certain when they start presenting themselves uh, to editors, that it's something that they 100% believe in. Because if you don't believe in your work yourself, mm -hmm. it's very hard to sell. Yeah. So you, you have to be very confident in what you're showing, that that is what you want to show. Yeah. And try to keep your own um, um, vision, it's very important. And um, make sure that you um, keep enjoying what you do. Mm. Even though sometimes there is uncertainty, you mm -hmm. know, um, you um, should definitely give it a try. Although it's not, for me, it's not the most, sometimes people compare it with social work, it does such a hard job. I must say that I think in the photography business, it's a, it's a tough job too, in a different way, mm -hmm. but it's, um, uh, it's something you should really, really want to do. Yeah. And otherwise, it, it don't even start there because it's just, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of work and you really, 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 uh, there, yeah, you really need to want to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Chantal. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>